The FP4 settings window can be found under File, FP4 Settings. The FP4 settings window is a virtual terminal to change settings on your FP4s, similar to RDM. Everything you can control on the screen of the FP4 can be changed and controlled from this window. You can also see FP4s in this window that are on the network but are not in beyond slash QS mode. This is great for troubleshooting projectors that are already hung in the air. On the top, we can refresh our list to see what projectors are on the network and label them if we would like. Under View, we can change how our list looks, and under Quick, we can quickly change modes of all of our projectors on the network. On the right, we can change all settings for the projectors, first with the mode, and then all the settings. To adjust settings, select which FP4 you want to change, or multiple FP4s in the list. First, we can select the operational mode we want for the FP4s to be in. Note, not all FP4s will have all options. It depends on what hardware they are equipped with. On the right, we can adjust other settings. First is our IP settings. We can see here the device's current IP mode, its IP, and its subnet mask. If we want to assign a static IP for this FP4, we can type in the fixed IP, its mask, and click Click Fixed IP. Note that if you are unaware of your network's IP settings, it's best to leave them in auto IP mode until you know your IP settings will work. You don't want to lose access to the device over the network because then you may have to go into the air to physically change it to auto IP or to another static. Under our master settings, we have control of the FP4's max brightness, its size, and hardware inverts of X and Y positions. This is useful for hardware flips. Then, under Color, we have access to our projector color shift and all the max brightness levels for each FP4 color channel. Next, we have our fixture profile. This is your DMX fixture profile for your either FP3, your 16-channel mode, or your FP4, which is your 39-channel mode. The names may have changed on newer firmwares, but if they've been renamed, it'll be obvious which one is the 16 and the 39-channel mode. Next, we have Artnet settings for your universe and subnet, then the fixture channel start. We can enable RDM and the preamble. If you're using DMX instead of Artnet into the laser using 5-pin, you can set your channel, RDM, and preamble for that here. Now, let's look at settings related to autoplay features. First, you can select our basic autoplay mode for playing a cue or a list and which index that is. Then, we can decide when the queue stops to either stop, loop, or hold. If you have a battery installed on your FP4, it can keep time. Here, you can set the date and time for the FP4 manually, or sync it to the PC. You can also sync all FP4s with this button. Now, let's move on to the overall geometric correction for size X and Y, position X and Y, rotation, and shear. These settings are the same settings that will change when you use the setup profile on the 39 channel DMX slash Artnet mode. Under timecode, we can select settings related to content that has been uploaded and running off of Artnet timecode. Choose the file index and any offsets you might need to keep everything in time. Lastly, we have our scan guard. This is a virtual scan guard, which will act similarly to our past safety scanning system. This will keep hot beams from becoming too hot and thus dangerous within your specified area. Horizon Level and Angle is a setting where you can set how high up your scarred area will be, and if you want it to be at an angle. Minimum Velocity is how slow the scanner's movements need to be to trigger the safety, and Dwell Time is how long a scanner needs to stay in one place to trigger the safety. You can invert the Y and how long it will take before the laser will turn back on here. Thank you for watching our Quickens video on the FP4 settings window. If you still need support, you can contact our support line or email us at support at pangolin.com. Thank you for watching.